Good evening, brothers and sisters. As members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church here in Southern California, I hope and pray that this message finds you well along with your family, especially now as we are facing a health crisis here in Los Angeles. When the last week, especially the officers of the Southern California Conference have been thinking on you as members of this large group of believers that we worship together every week. This morning I was praying for the Lord guidance how to communicate with you through this pandemic situation. And you know what? I remember one Bible promise. Psalm 91. I'm going to read this for you. David in Psalm 91 says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him I trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. This experience has been of thousands of believers like Daniel, who was thrown in the lion's den and suffered no harm. Even his three friends also, they were thrown in the furnace and they didn't smell to smoke. At the same time, yes, we have witnessed the opposite side of that experience. When faithful ones, like John the Baptist and Stephen, they suffer, suffer physically. When we read in the scripture, we find that being a believer doesn't mean that I won't have suffer in my life. However, I find that the Lord is going with me along any journey that I have to face in my life. It can be trouble or sickness. I completely believe that the Lord expects also at the same time that we, I need to be wise and prudent. In the context of what we are experiencing today, we need to be careful how we are going to manage this pandemic situation that we're facing here in our territory in Los Angeles. Yesterday, the Southern California Conference officers, we appointed a intervention committee composed by six individuals. The Executive Vice President, Elder James Lee, the Education Vice President, the Human Resources Director, the Asset Management Director, our communication director and our conference treasurer, obviously, because at one point it will be financial impact. Today, after thorough research, consultation, and prayer, it was decided that we need to close all our churches in Southern California Conference. Yes, all worship services. This afternoon, this committee was debating between what church size would be proper to close, large size, medium size, small. But with the rapid changes in the 24 hours in regards to this situation, we had to make the decision that we need to close all the worship services in our congregations. Effective this coming Sabbath, March 14. And we will do this through the rest of the month so our first worship service can be after April 1 if things are getting better or 
we will notify the pastors. Actually, I had the opportunity to address the pastors. With the, with the committee, we have a good conversation with them. And some of them, they are excited because they will, this situation is stimulating their creativity, how they can minister their members. We have never experienced this before. So now we are experiencing together something that instead of being a curse is coming to be a blessing for all of us. Seeing this disruptive decision in a positive way, it can bring us opportunities for two or three things. Number one, family worship services. <laughs> When was the last time that you had the opportunity to have worship with your family? Or maybe you're in, in, in the situation that I am. My kids right now, they are older and they are already left home and pretty much my wife and I. When was the last time when we were in the couch reading the Bible, singing, and reflecting in our spiritual journey. Also, this can be a, an, an, an opportunity for you to watch some of these sermons that these creative pastors they will be providing now within the next three Saturdays. Again, let's see this from the positive perspective, and definitely this is going to be a blessing for each one of us. At the same time, this non-attending church for a situation for three weeks may bring me some impact in my life in a couple areas. My church attendance, yeah, well, not attending church, which have been my practice all my life, not going for three Saturdays, can be probably something that can impact my following three Sabbaths and not going back to church. Because there is a blessing when I worship with brothers and sisters, when we are encouraging together in this spiritual journey. The second impact as well in my giving pattern. When I give my tithe and my offerings. Yes, when we go to church, we keep our envelopes with us. By the way, this is my envelope. I have it with me. This is my tithe of last month. Two Sabbaths had passed in March, March 1 and 8. I haven't had the opportunity to go to my church, even to see the treasure, because I've been in other appointments across the conference. But this is sacred. This is God's money, untouchable. So we can save this, and next time when I go to church, I will deliver this. A church. We will continue functioning and I'm sure that the Lord will continue blessing us as well as we are faithful and trusting in his promises as well. In regards to what to do and, and how to stay healthy to this situation, please read on our conference website. There's going to be a, a link also that you can go and visit. There will be information there how you can stay healthy at the same time. Mm -hmm. I know, I know, I know. You have been watching television. You have been receiving a lot of things through uh, WhatsApp, FaceTime, or Facebook, all of this, yes. But what if we focus all this situation and we move from crisis to Christ, reminding that Christ is greater than any crisis. God bless us 